It was back in February 2015 that Ma Long started this incredible period of dominance. It was then that he won the Q8 Open. At the time, not a great significant event, but it has brought on a period that has seen Ma Long really dominate the world table tennis scene. In March, he was then elevated to the number one world ranking in the men's singles. He then went on to win the German Open, the World Championships, which really changed his mindset and confirmed in his mind that he was truly one of the best players in the world. He then also won the 2015 China Open, the World Tour Grand Finals, the World Cup in 2015, and then in 2016 continued his run, winning the German Open again, the Qatar Open, and then the major prize, the gold medal at the Rio 2016 Olympics. He has a positive head-to-head -head record against every player that he's played more than once. His worst records are against Wang Hao with a 21-17 positive record and Vladimir Samsonov with an 8-5 positive record. The only players that have beaten him once that he has never beaten are Daniel Gorak and Koji Matsushita, who both beat him in 2006. He has now completed the Grand Slam of table tennis, winning the World Singles Championships, the World Cup, and now the Olympic gold medal. Welcome to the Ping Skills Table Tennis Show. Each week we pick a theme, this week, Ma Long's dominance. We'll talk about how he became so dominant over the rest of the table tennis world and how long that can continue. We'll also have the drill of the week, tip of the week, and the tournament wrap. Oh yeah, and the remember when segment. So first up, let's talk about Ma Long and his incredible run. Alois, this has certainly been an amazing run by Ma Long. What do you think changed in his game to make him so dominant over this period? I don't know that it was anything technical. I think it was more his mindset. And it was almost like he just needed to win that world championships to really uh, confirm in his mind that he was one of the best players in the world. And we see this often with players that they'll, they'll have a breakthrough win and then they will start to win more and more tournaments. So. Obviously, it's important to get some kind of, you know, winning feeling behind you. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, that, that little period before the World Championships where he, he did have a couple of wins would have boosted his confidence. But then I think also getting the chance to play Fang Bo in the final of the World Championships, not someone that had, had more experience and more titles under their belt. Um, and, you know, I think he went into that match really confident. Um, and, you know, was almost just f fell over the line. Yeah. But, I mean, I think also his game does seem to be better, but like I said, maybe it's more mental. But his backhand now is incredible. He hardly ever misses a backhand. Yeah. And, and you know, I mean, they, they're talking about him being, you know, perfect with his technique. It, it's, it's pretty close, isn't it? Um, but... You know, uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think it's technical that it's really changed. You know, I think um, it's much more the mental side. Okay, so when players go on these runs, obviously at some point they have to come to an end. Whether something happens, another player comes along, or whether they get too old, you know. But eventually, the run will come to an end. What sort of window does Marlong have? Well, he's 27 years old, so. You know, it's not like he's 21, 22. He is 27, and there are people knocking on the door behind him as well. I don't see him dominating in 2020 in Tokyo. Okay, interesting call. Um, so does that give him enough time to elevate him to be one of the greatest of all time in table tennis? Ah, good question. I don't think so. Um, Ooh. Well... No one has won two Olympic gold medals in the men's singles. Okay, so, Zhang Zikur very close. Yeah, Zhang Zikur close, but not really in the final, right? And Well, he's made two finals. What about uh, Wang Hao, who's made three finals? Wang Hao has made three finals, but for me, 
cannot be considered because he hasn't got over the line in the final. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So um, to be one of the greatest of all time, do you have to have won the Olympic Games? I think so. I, I think if you haven't ticked that box, then you can't be considered. Sorry, Wang Lee Chin. Wang three Lee time Chin. World champion. Yeah, three-time world singles number champion. Number one for, I don't know, years and years, an incredible run of number one. Yeah, but I... I, I, I Two I, bronze medals? Yep, no, <laughs> no, doesn't convince me. Okay. Um, yeah, so, and, and you know, we do, we do talk about the Olympics being easier to win than the, than the World Championships as well because of the field. There are only two Chinese now, especially. Yeah, yeah, and they have, if you're one of the top seeds, you actually play less matches than you do in the World Championships as well. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, um, but for me, it's still the most prestigious um, title at the moment. And if you haven't won it, then you can't be considered. Okay, there you go. Yeah, so but there are there are other Chinese players that have won um, Olympic gold. You know, um, Liu Go Liang, um, yeah. Ma Long's coach, yes. um, has won an Olympic gold medal, a World Singles Championships, World Cup. He's done it. Kong Ling Hui's done it. Um, and of course, do I need to say it, the great Jan Ove Waldner has done it. Yeah, now interestingly with Waldner, his longevity stands out to me. The Chinese players um, tend to have like uh, just a, a couple of years or maybe a four or five year span. But Waldner was like runner up in the Worlds in 87, won it in 89, runner up again in 91, um, won the World Championships in 1997, um, you know, yeah. runner up in the Olympics in 2000, and the, I think he won the Olympics in 92. So, you know, he's got a, a really long period where he was at the top of his game. Not, not always dominant over this period, but a really long period. Yes, but, you know, the, the Chinese have to compete with each other to just make their team. You know, if Waldner was in that same Chinese environment, you know, would he have even been playing past, uh, you know, 2003, oh, sorry, 1993 or 1995 or whatever it is. Yeah, good um, question. You know, he, he may not have even been able to get there. Because mm. the Chinese used to call him Evergreen because he would uh, just keep on refreshing himself and keep on beating the next generation of Chinese players. Yeah, that's right. And so, uh, but you're right, them competing against each other is interesting. Like, should they maybe consider holding some of those players for longer periods? Well, um, yeah, I mean, but if they're not beating each other, then it's difficult, you know. I mean, Zhang Ke, you know, have we seen the last of him? You know, his, his, his effort in the, in the final was, you know, was okay at best and really didn't show the dominance. You know, he did make the final, fantastic. But, but he, Zhu Xin would, or Fan Zendong probably would have too. They would have definitely made the final, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, um, all interesting discussion. You know, who who is considered the greatest of all time. I think, you know, now Ma Long has just put his name in the hat, but not really uh, knocking on the door strongly. Yeah, okay, but but like we said, he's still got a few years ahead of him at least. Yep. So um, I guess it all depends on what Ma Long can continue to produce over the next, you know, three to four years. Yeah, we've got a World Cup coming up. If you ticks that box again, um, if he can win another World Singles Championships. I mean, definitely, if he goes through to 2020 and takes that gold medal, that's it, you know, he has it. But there you go. right now, no. Interesting, all right, well there we go. The jury's out. Can Marlong be the greatest of all time? For the tip of the week, we're gonna talk about how to get that second victory over a player who you've just beaten for the first time. Ma Long's World Championship singles title in 2015 really established himself in dominance in the sport. For us, that dominance against a particular opponent can take a little bit of time. Think about this. You've just beaten a player for the first time. What happens the next time you play them? Often, and I say often, you lose the next time you play them. But why does that happen? Because it's difficult to establish that dominance against a player until you have beaten them a couple of times and in your mind, you are really certain that you are the better player. 
The tip of the week this week, we're going to give you some ideas on how do you approach that second match, that really important one to establish that dominance. Okay, Alice, let's pretend I've beaten some player I've been struggling against. It's now another match. I'm coming up against them again. How do I approach that match? The, the most important thing is that you need to focus on your strategies, your tactics. How are you going to beat them? If you just go into that match thinking, oh, I beat them last time, I should beat them again, there's no shoulds. It's all about the process. You have to do the hard yards. You have to still think about what you're going to do and how you're going to beat them. Look back at your notes or at the vault, um, at what you've written down in the vault as to how you beat them the last time you played them. Yeah, good idea. The ping skills vault where you can record all your tactics against a player. Now, yeah, say I've done that, I've recorded the tactics, I know what I should be doing. It's still hard not to think that, you know, I beat them for the first time, this time they're gonna come out harder. And, you know, if they get a few points up on me, you know, maybe I'm thinking, ah, oh, you know, maybe I'm yeah. not good enough and not really. Yeah. And I, and I think what you need to do, though, there is think about, OK, if it was the previous match and I was a couple of points behind, what would you be doing? I'd be working hard. I'd still be focusing on my tactics. Don't walk out there thinking that you should be now dominating that match. You're not going to. You know, you've only just established that you can beat the other person. So if you're two points behind, that's fine. If you're three points behind, that's fine. If it's even, that's fine. I often see in situations where players are even. You know, it might be uh, six all or eight all, and one player is like, you know, oh no, like, you know, and, and the other player is, yes, it's, it's eight all, and the other player is, oh no, it's eight all. It's eight all, you know, play the next point hard, uh, whether you should be winning in your mind, whether you should be losing in your mind, just play the next ball hard, play the next point, thinking tactically about what you need to be doing. Yeah, it's certainly interesting to see the different reactions of people where, yeah, like I said, when the scores are level. So it's interesting, Alois, if I'm playing a player that I've beaten lots and lots of times, I'm gonna feel quite relaxed going into that match against a player I've just um, beaten once, but you know, I think they're gonna come at me and try and beat me. My, my mind's definitely a bit more worried about that match. And, and does that worry help me or does that make it worse or how do I use that to my advantage? Yeah, so I mean, a little bit of anxiety is good, okay? But if that worry then overpowers you, then it can be, it can be detrimental. So again, you know, it's about going through the process. What tactics do you need to use? What strategies? And then utilising your pre-point routines, prepare well for the match, do all those things well, go out there, just give it your best. Yeah, so I guess in the end, it's all about just playing your best table tennis, which means handling that pressure well. So have a look at last week's show on pressure, very useful. And then that allows you to play your best. Absolutely, play your best and then nothing else matters. The drill of the week this week is the backhand switch, which is something that Ma Long uses to perfection. This drill, both players are playing backhand to backhand. Now I'm allowed to switch and play the ball down the line to Jeff's forehand at any time I want. But Jeff can also pivot and play a forehand from his backhand corner. If I see that, I'm going to try and change the ball down the line to his forehand corner. Let's have a try. At this point, I'm not sure what I found so funny but I think it was just the fact that Alice was so good with his right hand. <laughs> Jeff's lost the Lost the plot. I'm gonna try and see when Jeff is pivoting before he pivots like that. So I've got to watch carefully to see if I can see when Jeff's pivoting.
For the person doing the pivoting, it's really important that they're able to move around really quickly so that they're not giving the tell signs to the other player so that they can go down the line. So I need to play my backhand and then very quickly switch and make the forehand top spin from here. For the person that is switching between the backhand and the forehand, you need to be watching and making sure that you're trying to recognise the signs of when that player is going to pivot. You see Ma Long do this so well. So he's playing backhand to backhand, and then as soon as he sees the other person going to pivot, he can play that ball down the line with just a nice simple backhand block or topspin, and that's often a winner. It's time for Remember When, where we take a look back into table tennis history. This week's Remember When is about when the expedite rule was relevant. At this Olympic Games in Rio, there was an expedite match between Han Ying from Germany and Ti Yana from Hong Kong. It was 10-6 in the third game and expedite came in. So firstly, what is expedite? Expedite is a rule where the server needs to win the rally in a certain number of shots. So if I'm playing against Jeff, if I'm serving, Jeff just has to get 13 balls back on the table in that rally to win the point. The Expedite rule was brought in because in the 30s, rallies used to last for literally hours. So both players just refused to hit and were defensive and used to push the ball back over and over and over again. The expedite system comes into play after 10 minutes in a game, unless there have been at least 18 points scored in that game. So if it's nine all and 10 minutes elapsed, then expedite doesn't come in, or even 10-8. Is it relevant today? Most players now will attack after a few shots. Even the defenders aren't going to defend for 10 minutes in a row. To me, games up to 11 and expedite, there's just no need. A game up to 11 is finished in a few minutes. Even when there's two defenders playing each other, I think it still all works. Is it relevant? I don't think so anymore. It's time for the tournament wrap, and hence we're looking at the Olympic Games. Well, Alois, the Olympic singles events are over. Ma Long and Ding Ning are the 2016 Olympic champions. Yeah, they, um, they certainly are, and they're very dominant uh, as well. Um, Ma Long expected, you know, he went in as, as hot favourite. Uh, we all expected him to win and win pretty comfortably, and he certainly did do that. So, um, first match up against Jonathan Groff, he, um, he won 4 0. Um, in his next match, he played Jung Young Sik from Korea, and that was actually a tough match. So there were a couple of 13-11 games in there that he won the last couple of games. So he certainly didn't have it his own way. Um, but yeah, it was And I think he was down two love in that game as well. Came back to win 4-2 in strong fashion. But again, yeah, no one ever took him to the deciding set. So, you know, still in that regards, pretty comfortable. Yeah, um, but for me, an interesting part of that men's singles draw, though, last week we did talk about, you know, the players coming into the draw um, at the later stages, you know, the top uh, 16 players. And I had, had a look at the stats. So mm -hmm. the top 16 players coming in, seven of them lost. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so nine matches went the way they were supposed to seven didn't so you know certainly and i think perhaps uh the ittf or the ioc need to just reconsider that format now because it almost does look like it puts those players in um in a difficult situation throwing them into the draw um for the first round yeah well we saw timo bowl going out probably the highest profile uh player to go out uh to aruna yeah exactly so um yeah, let's let's have a look at that uh, that system, but yeah, getting back onto our our winners. So you know, Ma Long dominant, 
but the other interesting story was always going to be Zhang Zike, um, put in you know somewhat controversially into the Chinese lineup, um, and leaving out players like Fan Zendong and um, yeah, and and Zhu Zin. Zin. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so there would have been a bit of pressure on um, Zhang Zike going into the tournament. He knew that okay, China has put it on him. He had to make the final, and the yeah, and the final was his real aim as well you know he had to, had to get there so so his draw um he he beat uh christian from romania in uh four nil he beat koki niwa four one koki niwa is a, a a dangerous play you know he does so many different things but he uh, took count of him four one and then against samsonov as well um in the semi-final the, the really big match um, he won 4-1 in that semi-final as well. So the scores, again, were close, you know. He took the first 11-9, the second 13-11, the third 12-10. You know, so he's up 3-0, but all three games were just decided by two points. Goes down in the fourth game 11-6, and then again wins the last set 11-9. So the four sets he won were all by two points. So um, yeah. so that would have been a big pressure um, uh, match for Zhang Zikou. and maybe does it account for his mood in the final? Had he already played his final, perhaps? Yeah, because in the final he did not play that well, uh, especially the last few sets. I saw him grab at his back, so I don't know if he was injured a little bit or you know he just wasn't mentally in it. But he he wasn't wasn't engaged. You saw Ma Long every time he won a point was like yes, and uh, Zhang Zikou, just you know calm quiet not really fast um and, and that's not what we'd expect from Zhang Zike in an Olympic final he's known for his fighting spirit yeah so yeah maybe maybe it was just a little bit of that maybe just it was that was the semi-final was his final you know he had he had done what uh, China had uh, put him there to do um so that could account for it a little bit but um, women's singles, yes. the, the, the final, really, uh, really different uh, to the men's final. It was just a ding-dong battle all the way, 4-3 uh, uh, to Ding Ning over Li Xiaojia. Again, Li Xiaojia put in there controversially. Um, Liu Xi Wen, the world number one, left out of the team. Um, but Li, Li Xiaojia was given the opportunity to defend her title, I suppose. Yeah, I guess that was it. And as yeah. you said, that was a ding dong battle, <laughs> yeah. which Ding Ning ended up winning. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. And, yes. And what a close match, though! What a sensational, you know, finish to the tournament. Yeah. So Ding Ning ended up uh, taking the title four games to three. Um, just having a look at the um, the scores. So it was eleven seven. So the, even even the last game, it was it was three all, and then um, Ding Ning just got away. Uh, towards the end of or that, those middle stages and and um, and overpowered, but Li Xiaojie was leading. Um, she was leading. Uh, uh, so three uh, games to two. Three two. Yep. So Ding Ning won the first um, and the third, and then Li Xiaojie won the fourth and the fifth to lead three two. So you know did put the pressure on Ding Ning um, certainly, but Ding Ning, gee, she was strong in the last few games and. Uh, and it was interesting to just watch Lee, uh, Lucy when in the crowd as well, you know, what she would have been thinking. She would have been thinking, why, why exactly aren't I out there? Yeah, yeah, tough situation for sure. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah so Ding Ning, Ding Ning, um, deserved champion. And she, it, was, it was really good to see the emotion on Ding Ning after she won. There were tears. She went over and hugged her coach. Um, and afterwards, she said, "That's the first time she's ever hugged her coach." Um, so she, yeah, she jumped over the barriers and hugged her coach. And there was a, there was a lot of uh, emotion around it. And that's what we want to see. We want to see that in table tennis, because you know, again, it was two Chinese players playing against each other. But at the end, to see that emotion and to see the personality of Ding Ning come out was fantastic. Yeah, I, I happened to watch the the women's uh, tennis singles final um, between a girl from Puerto Rico... And, and Kerber from and, Germany. Yeah, and Kerber from Germany. Um, and that was... Like, I was sitting there with palms sweating and stuff because, you know, this is uh, Puerto Rico's first gold medal um, ever. Um, and I was watching it and I was watching the tension and, and just the emotion when she won was fantastic. That, 
you know, that's why people watch um, sport. You know, they don't they don't like to see mm. just the end of the match and oh, there you go, thanks. You know, gold medal, thanks very much. Um, so Ding Ning, great job on winning and great job on allowing yourself to express your emotions at the end of the match. That's what table tennis needs. Absolutely. And, you know, great to see that the Olympics is, yeah, means so much to the table tennis players. Yeah. Now, Alois, moving on, it is the team's event time. We're progressing nicely through the draw and we've had some interesting results so far. Yeah, so the, um, the um, women's team is up to the semi-final stage um, and... The, one of the semi-finals has already been played as we speak. So Germany uh, beating Japan 3-2 in an absolute thriller. Um, so in that match, uh, Mima Ito went down in her first singles 11-9 and then also ended up losing um, the doubles match that she played in. Yes, yeah, so a lot of five-setters here. Down to the wire, 3-2, couldn't have been closer. Yeah, so Mima Ito, first game, just having a look. Um, down 12-10 in the fifth to Patricia Solia, um, the chopper. Um, second match, uh, Han Ying going down to Kazumi Ishikawa, 11-8 in the fifth game. The third match, another five-setter, 11-7 to the Germans, uh, Shan Jiona and uh, Patricia Solia, the choppers. Um, against Fukuhara and Mima Ito. The fourth match was an absolute breeze, 3 0 um, to <laughs> Ishikawa, but it was 11 2, 13 11, 14 12, and then the big decider at 2 all. I Fukuhara going down to Han Ying, 11 9 in the fifth. So, you know. That's that, going to be tough. Uh, Japan actually won the silver medal in the teams last time. This time they're going to have to fight it out for a bronze. So that'd be disappointing for them. But how exciting for Germany. Yeah, absolutely. Germany, a guaranteed medal at the Olympics. Um, and they will be up against the winner of China and Singapore. So that's a, um, a repeat of the World Ch- Teams Championships when China, when, um, China went down to Singapore a few years ago in 2010. Um, but I don't. I don't see China. Unlikely yeah, to see that I don't this see time. China uh, going <laughs> down here. Yeah. Um, playing against Singapore, so uh, and probably for Germany, lucky it's a guaranteed medal because I don't see them getting over China either. Yeah. Good. Good, good point. But we'll see. Yeah, it so, is sport. Anything can happen. Yeah. So so Ding Ning, Li Jiajia, and Lu Xi Wen coming in as the as the uh, as the reasonable sort of third player <laughs> um, in the team. Uh, well, up against Feng Tianwei, Yu Ming Yu, and Zhao Yi Han. So that'll be China. And by the time you're watching this show, you know, we probably know the result and we're going to look like geniuses or absolute <laughs> nitwits. But um, China wins the semi, China wins the final, both 3 0, done and dusted. Yes, indeed. And then uh, moving on, the last event is obviously the men's teams event. And again, China, really strong favourites for this one. Yeah, so um, again, up to the semi final stage, um, China playing uh, Republic of Korea. So that'll be in a few hours from now. Um, and uh, Japan playing Germany before that. So a repeat of the women's semi final. Yeah. Can the men here take, uh, take revenge for the women? Yeah, and, and interestingly, so um, this time um, Mizutani taking the bronze medal in the men's singles, you know, so their first um, singles uh, medal at Olympics for Japan. So he'll be pretty buoyed, I'm sure. So Mizutani, Koki Niwa and Maharu Yoshimura um, up against Bol Ovcharov and Bastian Steger. You know, on paper, that German team looks Pretty darn strong, doesn't it? But, you know, Bol, a little bit of a question mark over him. Ovcharov, disappointed again in the singles. Um, Bastian Steger, who knows? So, Mizutani, yeah. Koki Niwa, let's see. Yeah, Yoshimura. Mizutani in good form. It's going to be a close one. I'm going to pick Germany 3-2. 3-2? I yeah. like it. Okay. And then uh, in the other semi, we have um, China against uh, Republic of Korea. Yeah. Any, any tips there, Jeff? Uh, uh, China, 3-0. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> and then China to win the final, 3-0. Well, but if Ma Long comes up against Jung Young-sik again, what do you think? <laughs> you know, like, he, close match in the, in the singles. 
Will, will it be a bit of a hangover after the singles gold medal? No chance. No, no, no <laughs> chance. And uh, apparently, um, you know, after, after the singles, they, they really committed themselves to saying, well, that's over, that's done. Zheng mm. Jike, um, Ma Long, we're now going to focus on the, on the gold medal. And Zhu Xin has been there in the background uh, preparing. He'll play in the doubles. Having a left-hander in the doubles will be, uh, will be awesome. Yep. And that will be the match that basically shuts the gate. Gold medal, China. There you go. All right, well, that's a wrap of the Olympic tournament to date. Thanks so much for watching this week's show. It's brought to you by PingSkill, so make sure you go to pingskills.com and check out all the great tutorials we have on table tennis. Hopefully we can help you improve your game. The music from today's show was Brontosaurus by Topher Moore and Alex Alana from the YouTube Audio Library. The other day I was feeling a bit self-conscious about my hairstyle, so I asked Alois what he thought. This is what he said. Is it relevant? I don't think so anymore. Once again, thanks for watching and until next time, keep enjoying your table tennis.